Hello, Blazer fans. Welcome back to Blazing Into Summer, day five. Can you believe that? Day five. We've had five amazing days of Blazer entertainment here on Code It Live. Uh, if you're just tuning in today and you haven't been up to speed on all things Blazing Into Summer 2.0, um, let's do a quick recap on Monday, we had the program manager for uh, Blazor, Daniel Roth. He was on talking about what's coming in .NET 6, the future of Blazor, and what we have to look forward to in November. All of that is up to up on our YouTube site, and uh, all of the preview bits for .NET 6 are available if you do a quick Google Bing for those. Uh, Layla Porter from the Layla Codes It channel was on talking about Signal R in real time translation with Blazor. We built a fun speech to text app using Blazor and Signal R. Um, that is up on YouTube. Uh, Eagle Hansen was here. Uh, so, congrats to Eagle. His B unit um, testing framework that he talked about on Wednesday just went uh, to the .NET Foundation. Uh, so, it is part of .NET, the .NET Foundation now. Amazing stuff there. Uh, Fahad Curious Drive came on and talked about creating efficient Blazor applications with Bla or <laughs> efficient Blazor apps. Uh, talked about virtualization and lazy loading and all sorts of really great stuff, little performance tweaks that you can add to your app. So really good content there. Um, I jumped over to the On.NET Live channel yesterday as well and talked to Cecil Phillip. Uh, we did some uh, simple Blazor components and learned about uh, the various bits and pieces that make up components in Blazor. So uh, that is over on the on.net.net live channel. So if you click on that link in our landing page here, you will get that. Today we're going to talk about UX with Blazor. And it's a fun and relaxed Friday. And who else better to have a fun and relaxed Friday with? Uh, no other than Fierce Kittens herself. So uh, if you haven't seen Fierce Kittens before, make sure you check out her channel. She is going to come on stream in just a second. Now, as I mentioned, all the things that we've covered this week are over on the Code It Live channel, or the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash Telerik, you'll find all of the past videos from Blazing Into Summer and lots of other great content that we've done here on the Code It Live channel. So make sure you go over to YouTube and check that out. And now for what you're all here for, let's get over to Fierce Kittens, Microsoft MVP, gaming engineer, uh, Twitch streamer, Fierce Kittens. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Good. I I was waiting for first of her name <laughs> to come out. <laughs> There's lots of lots of titles there. <laughs> but you always have such a fantastic show over on your channel. You're like the jack of all trades. You, you what don't you do over on your channel? <laughs> I used to say I don't play a musical instrument, but I just picked up violin thanks to my community for raising so much money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital that I had to go buy a violin. So now I'm following through with that. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. Oh, how much money did you raise? Uh, $33,170. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. Yes, yes. and thanks in part to Progress as well for making, uh, making a contribution. So that was very nice. Oh, that's awesome. I love that we, we help with stuff like that. It's, and of course, you know, somebody that's got something amazing going on that we, we jump in to try to do what we can do uh, to help out. But that, that is no like small feat. That's a lot of cash you raised. That's so cool. It was almost three times what we have ever raised. So that was very overwhelming. <laughs> and such a good cause, too. Yes, absolutely. So you've been working with some Blazor lately, and you're going to talk to us a little bit today about some user experience stuff. What do you have in mind? So, so I work on an app uh, specifically for Twitch streamers that uh, it's called GifBot. I've spoken about it a number of times in various um, avenues. 
um, venues, venues, I don't know. I'm going to try to relax. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> this app listens to events that are happening on your Twitch channel and then reacts by playing animations or sound effects. That's really it. That's the gist of it. Um, but a few of the things that I have done over time with the application have been more of like shortcuts so that I didn't have to do, you know, any, any like uh, I extremely complex things with components or layouts. I just wanted to get it done. Um, and that's starting to come back and bite me in the butt. Um, because new new users who pick up the application who aren't technically inclined may do things like, uh, you know, typo the name of something that I have to link something to. So, for example, I added a new feature um, called the Snapper, specifically for the St. Jude Prize season, where it listens for a certain number, uh, you know, dollar amount of a donation to St. Jude or any Tiltify event, really. And we'll time out half of chat. <laughs> um, and I added an option to it to play an animation. But in the, the hurry to get it out the door, I just gave them a string field. So just type the name of your animation there. Okay. So thinking from a UX standpoint, your users may not remember the name of the command that they want. Um, your users may typo the command. Um, or they may want to rename the command and then have to go through everything that could possibly reference it and have to change that too. So from, from an architecture standpoint, the data is not durable. But then from the user standpoint, it's clunky. So yeah. one of the things I'd like to get done today or get, get done, try to get done today <laughs> is to write the 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 inner workings, the, the bare bones of a component that will encapsulate the functionality for providing uh, a list, a drop down list of animations that you have in your system that you can use to select from instead of typing in the name and hoping you remember everything or never rename it. And then on the back end, the data models will actually link by GUID so that it's a unique identifier and we don't have to worry about that changing. Um, ah, yeah. So it, it's a very small task, but it does demonstrate the importance of not over-engineering and going hardcore on making this glorious thing with previews and stuff. We just want to get it working and then add on to it once we have ensured that the foundation is solid. I, that's usually the engineering approach I take. I call it baby steps. You just yeah. baby step till you get to the feature that you really, really want with all of the bells and whistles, but you got to get started somewhere. Um, mm. I think I think people get caught like trying to boil the ocean on the first try. Yeah. And then you've got a bunch of spaghetti code and just it turns out really bad. <laughs> See, sometimes people clash with that, you know, and in, in gaming, which is my background as, as, a, as a tools and core tech engineer, um, I have to deal with user workflows all of the time. And sometimes it's difficult to explain to people, like, I'm just doing this because I want you to test it because it'll be quicker for us to test as opposed to giving you this <laughs> and then I never hear from you again. So, so taking, yes, baby steps is a great way of putting it. Um, KISS principle, et cetera, et cetera. Just, you know, try to start small and then build on top of it as opposed to going large right away. Awesome. So let me go ahead and share your screen. The floor is all yours today. Woo! Okay. Um, I'm here to help support in any way you need me. Just let me know. I'll try to interact with chat as well. But okay. uh, have at it. All right, so this is GIFBot. I decided to go ahead and start it up and run it for you guys at the very beginning so you can see what it is that we're talking about. Um, it's terribly simple looking, uh, and that's because I, I'm more of a back-end engineer. <laughs> so I hate CSS. So I'm just I'm just thankful that we have the the Blazor components to work with, so I don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, the snapper is basically this feature again that was proposed by Andy the Frenchie, who is a music streamer here on Twitch, and her community uses it uh, quite religiously to just troll people and time people out and you can revenge snap someone so the Thanos gets logged and and uh, somebody can 
donate money to revenge snap that person, which temporarily bans them from the channel so they can't talk or do anything. It's hilarious. Um, it was probably responsible for about half of the $100 donations that were made in my channel over the St. Jude campaign. Um, so chat, chat's asking if you can zoom oh, yeah? in just a little bit on your browser. Oh, if I can? Oh, okay. You guys are breaking my soul a little. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like my grandmother's sitting here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't see. Okay, I get it, though. Um, all right, so how's that? Are we good? I'm reading chat, better. so. All right. Um, so I'm just, now I'm like, God, I wonder how bad it looks now that I've got it blown up. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. This is fine. Um, so, in here you can see like this makes sense you give it a command name that's just to name it under the hood it actually has a GUID to help identify it um and then you can select redemption type cost and then there's these beautiful text fields these are actually commands that i have in my animation section over here um and this is what I mean by not rigid. What if I what if I messed up and did and, and left out the A? Well, then it's not going to be able to locate the command to play the command um, once this is done. So basically, it says I am inevitable when it's done uh, playing the snapper. So it'll roll through chat, choose half of the chat, ban them, and then play this animation. So it just won't play. It doesn't spit out an error. It doesn't like make the windows bonk sound, nothing like that. So for the for the user who doesn't understand what happened, they're like, it's broken. And then I get a million emails. So to make this less like error prone for the end user, that's where we're gonna create that drop down list. Now, while I could very simply make a drop down list that would yeah, just just use the the blazer telerik drop down list component um i want to add more to it over time which is why i start out by saying this is going to be really simple and i'm sure somebody in the back is going to go well well actually if you wanted to uh you you could just do you could just have a drop down list yeah but you, then you wouldn't have later adding on previews so people could see spongebob bouncing around in the selection um and have somewhat of an idea what they're choosing but in the one hour or so that i have today we won't get that far so just bear that in mind because i'm sure some somebody will do it somebody always says that well actually you could do it this way okay so sorry for british people but i love the accent um so uh we're not even going to look at the snapper editor right now i'm going to go ahead and close that but here's the data um where i have this um and now i'm working with um i'm working with some some basic data right now uh you know just a string it's all written out as a json file um and so just for the sake of today i'm just going to go ahead and create a GUID that we're going to track animation ID and so I had to turn that off because the editor for the razor file just likes to throw my everything everywhere else so I had to turn off auto stuff no copper beardy no I see you <laughs> All right, so we're going to use this animation ID. So this is on the actual snapper data. Now we have to write a component that's going to hold that information. Um, so we're going to go up to my client project. I know this is small. Is there a way to increase that? That's like a solution for ants, but... There is, but it's going to blow up all of the fonts on anything yeah, that's we're not good. in the code window. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. we're good that's fine i'm just gonna we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna add a new item and we're gonna create a razor component animation selector component we're, we're getting that sounds all like the alternatives good name. for well actually no <laughs> you People know so if you just yeah god i've heard everything i guys guys seriously female programmer here i've heard it all Sorry, my bad. Wrong button. <laughs> I was trying to mute myself. 
I'm so glad I put on makeup. <laughs> All right, I'm going to steal some stuff. Actually, no, I'm not going to steal stuff because it's terrible. It's This is very hard for me to code at like 190%, just so you all know. This is just this is weird. I like your VS um, theme, by the way. Thank you. It's Dracula. Nice. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think, it, yeah, just do Visual Studio Dracula. Don't don't put it up on screen, though, because God only knows what you'll find on Google. But yeah, it's it's really I like it. I wish it was Visual Studio Code where I could like make it have like glowy text and stuff, but I can't. That's OK. Uh, this is um, C sharp top to bottom. Oh, there and, and uh, there Code It Live is saying what my theme is. There you go. OK, I'll shut up now and start coding. Um, OK, so uh, for this component, um, I'm basically going to just have at this time a drop down box. So we're going to do code. And again, brevity's sake for all of you, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and leave the code in with the razor file since it's so small. Um, but I do tend to break out. Um, maybe not here but at work i do i break out my pages and my code separate i like to do that now anyway um okay so we're gonna do param parameter uh and we want to pass it a list of let's see if i call it something else um i hate to bother you about this one more time oh, but yeah. the font size uh, YouTube, apparently, this has to be bigger for YouTube to see. <gasps> I'm never going to be able to see my code again. How's <laughs> this? I think that's better. Thank you. <laughs> I, f I feel like I could code without my glasses now. I love you all. Okay. Uh, so I don't think I actually have. So I just need a stub of animation data. Um... So let's think, we probably need to create a new class for this. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that's for visualization. I don't want to put it there. It's like the worst thing is naming classes. Add a new item. And we will call it not a, a theme file. That was weird. Um, let's see. Um, animation selection item or selector item like that oh god <laughs> this is, it's so big uh and we're gonna give it a public GUID id with a default value um public GUID display name which will technically be its command um and for now we'll leave it at that oh can i do that i can't do that that's fine i didn't need it anyway um and now we'll do animation selector oh, item using i cheat i copy paste also yeah, i like to I use stack overflow get the um the uh, autocomplete stuff working in Razor properly. Oh, it properly. drives me nuts. Oh, oh, God. Oh, by the way, I'm on .NET 5, so it won't automatically refresh when we start testing in the browser. I have not been brave enough to update that yet. Yeah, so that's, I that, that's you wait. I can't wait. I, I actually get to use Blazor more at work now. I've been evangelizing the heck of doodle out of it at work. Um... Okay, so list animation selector item, uh, items, or actually animations, we'll, that would be a little better. Oh. So Smab UKs might have seen a typo in your class. Probably. Where oh, yes, thank you. you. Wanted to string instead of a, there you go. It, I tell you one thing, it is, thank you, it is very difficult to follow this when it's at 225%. <laughs> 
<laughs> Extreme close I, up. I, she can imagine I don't Wayne's normally world. do this. <laughs> was it Wayne's World? Extreme close up. Extreme. This is beyond extreme. This is like ridiculous. There we go. I probably am going to need that. I'm just going to copy this stuff over. What was what did, it, what did I need there? Parameter. I thought I had. Let me look. So anybody that's watched me code before, you you know, like I copy paste everything. <laughs> like I I try to type the least amount of typing possible. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Honestly, if anybody thinks that people memorize this, then they're so wrong. Why is this happening? Why is this being fussy? Why are you being fussy? I did it right. I don't oh, think I so saw weird. you rename the file, but did you rename it? Because sometimes if you rename a file, it goes bonkers. That's true. But no, no, this is the animation selector component razor file. And it's like, I don't know what this is. You know what? I'm going to say it's just bowl hockey until I compile it. Maybe false negatives. Eh? Does that a lot? I, I, uh, it does. It does now. But on this one it's not a valid declaration type hmm. property indexer. Oh, yeah. you need public property on there. Oh, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. we got it. We're good. <laughs> Maybe now. Can I get her setter? Oh, geez. Yep. It's Friday. It's this is this is what we do on Friday. Well, this is what's getting me is it's like, no, you can't you can't do this. Yeah, why is it? It's fighting you all the way, isn't it? It is. Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, see, bull hockey. That <laughs> that is bull hockey. When it's as I love Razor and and using Blazor stuff, but hoy, the the editor sometimes gets me. Yeah, I've had a lot of issues with IntelliSense in the new preview of Visual Studio, and yesterday I did like at for each, I hit tab, and it did nothing, and I was like. I have to write a for each from memory. Uh oh. <laughs> no, no. This is, I was going to make an observable collection, but actually, what I'll probably do: region properties and parameters. Oh, I love to see somebody else use regions. I do because, uh, at least in enterprise code, not this. But enterprise code, it'll just explode and you'll have like a thousand lines. At which point, some people may argue you need to split off to another file. I could see that. But regions really help a lot with organizing. Like my hub is huge. The, 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 the GIFBot hub here is ridiculous. So if I didn't have regions, like I have a whole region here for goal bar, I wouldn't know where anything was. The way you're using them isn't it's not what people usually associate with why you don't use regions though you're doing it the right way you've got your you know, you. properties and parameters sectioned out and this is where you're gonna have your private members i think what people yeah. kind of frown upon is like you know this uh massive monolithic function that does like too many things and then inside the function you're like well this part of the function does this with regions <laughs> it's like, that's no, what that's not comment blocks are for <laughs> uh yeah i mean i'm not gonna gatekeep how people want to uh you know live their life but yeah that that's not how i do it okay so we're actually gonna do this number because I want to be able to say state has changed. Uh, um, if M animations is not equal to value. Oh my God. See, this is what I mean about the razor files. Like, yeah. <laughs> when you when you set it, it's so it, it jacks up everything. Um, and it's I'd... giving you value task for some reason. This is what I, what I was having an issue with yesterday. You're not on preview, oh. are you? Huh? You're no, not on I'm not. The... So nope. weird. What has changed in our universe that this is happening? Ow. Wow. <laughs> okay. KD. Okay, now it's 
kind of sort of kind of back yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just the razor files if i had a lot of people what they'll do is and i honestly now i believe this is part of it they'll take this whole code block and move it into a partial class Mm -hmm. which you can totally do. It's just for the sake of letting you guys be able to see everything that I'm doing today. I just want to keep it in one file so we're not back and forth in a lot of tabs, unless it involves Stack Overflow, in which case I do copy and paste from there quite frequently. They added a button in Preview, so you can right-click on your code block, and it will just shove it into a partial, like, without you touching anything. Hmm. Lovely. So I thought that's pretty cool. Um, drop down list. Okay. Also, recently I've learned drop down list is very different from combo box. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually had to so use it many, at work this week. So many variations of that UI. Right. Okay. So we are going to bind it to animations, which for some reason it's like, no. I wonder why. We'll just do like that for now. And I think I need to do, say I don't have your components memorized. Value. So if you're manually handling the value changed event, mm. then you'll use value. If you're data binding, you'll use the- um, Bind. The bind. Uh, bind value. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I need to, well, I need to capture it. So, so we will do. So no matter if you use our drop down or any of them, just the nature of a select list, cause it has two, two parts to it. It has the, the data part of it, and then it has the selected value part of it. Um, and then there's a lot of inference that has to happen with the types. So if you're going to handle it manually, there's a few things that you have to set. You have to set value, value changed, and I think T item for it to work properly. Um, yeah. And if you don't set T item, you'll get like this weird thing on the on change event. Actually, I think I just set the name too. I can just set the name of it. But this, we want to open that file. Let's pull this over here. So the T item, I guess, would be the ID. So T item is going to be the type that you're binding. Oh, the type I'm binding. OK, animation selector item. And ID, maybe? No. Nah. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. I don't know if you need. Let me bring. To, it's this uh, yeah. It's I think it's value. We've got some good examples here on our website too. Yeah, I I'm always actually copy about to paste bring that up. <laughs> the reason I know like all that it's gonna be trouble is because I always run into this stuff, and it's even with the built-in like Blazor basic like select list, it does this. Uh, it's oh. all about the type inference that has to happen. Nice. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's always like, um, so, so there's, so again, like the, there's the text field, which is, okay, what do I display? Um, and because again, I'm not going to do anything overly fancy with this right now with templates. Um, and then there's the value field and then the bind value. So that's what I, I need to kind of get that bound in here. So good, um, selected animation. Oh my lord. So we're just going to do that for now. And then we'll do text field is going to be display name. And value field is going to be equal to ID. And then bind value is going to be equal to selected animation. Hopefully this works with GUIDs because I haven't had luck with GUIDs in the past and the components. Uh, specify the missing T value. Oh. Yeah. So if you're... I think I'm fine. I think I'm If I you're using that. bind, I don't think you need 
that. Yeah. If you're not using bind, that's when you have to possibly specify it. So it looks like the red squigglies went away. Okay, good. Because for a second, it was, <laughs> yes, this is why I don't like doing this at 225% because we're already scrolled out to the side. But if you're in normal, <laughs> like, zoom, you're totally fine. So funny. Okay. So I'm just going to compile this. And we're not going to do anything with it, like actually firing an event. But if, but what we're going to want to do so that we know when we've selected something is because this is going to be a separate component. We're going to want to fire an event that can be listened to so that we can do anything else on our end to um, set that value on the data. So because uh, I don't think I don't think that would propagate back up. So, um, so now we need to open up the, where are we, features, and we're going to go to the snapper editor. So this is the, this is the big editor file for the snapper. Um, and I need to find post snap animation and pre snap animation. So you see here, I'm actually just using a text box. Um, and so I'm going to need to pass in a list of animations to that new component that we just wrote. So for brevity's sake, I'm just going to stick this in underneath the text box so that we can at least see the data. Um, so we'll do animation selector component, and then we're going to pass the animations, and I'm just going to give it, um, I'm just going to pass it something now I don't actually uh, have. Animation options. We'll just create it like that. Um, and we, we're not even going to tell it what the selected animation is. We're just going to chuck it in there real quickly so they can see it working. Now, this doesn't exist. So here's where I have a partial class. So because this is a huge file of all of my like HTML and razor components and mixed up code. So I actually put the actual code here in this partial class. So it's a little easier for me to, to, to view it. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is find the initial code. Razor component there. I put it in here on the on initialized async. Um, I use signal R so that I have two way communication with the back end. So I'm going to add something to my hub so I can get a, a workable list of uh, the animations that I can use um, to provide to that component that we just created. So we get the snapper data and then get the animations list. Signal R is awesome. This is. Uh... Oh, it is. I mean, you don't all like for this type of thing. I don't need to do this, right? I could just use an endpoint to get this. Mm -hmm. But the pattern that I've established is two way, uh, you know, bidirectional communication with the server. And it's it's so neat because you can actually have like a, a, a client server styled architecture with the blazer website uh and have that kind of communication it's really neat like creating chat applications and things and you can it opens it up to so many other options i wish i could write a game in giftbot without it being a huge conflict of interest with my my job which <laughs> codename yeah. burger king but yeah get animation options and we'll just create that you guys see i get like name things and then i get to it it's horrifying what i do <laughs> uh private async task get animation options and then basically i i just grab all of the data as a raw json string and i flip and love json these days so that's all i'm doing um so we're gonna do a string raw data and await m hub connection invoke async string and this is also how i kind of function as a, a back-end services engineer i've i've written so many mmo backends at this point like i just kind of think in long strings of data and then chop it up as needed um get animation options and then boop I don't 
have that in here. I kind of need that, don't I? Using gifbotlaser.share.models.animation. So have you heard about global usings yet? No. Dot, dot net, uh, or sorry, C sharp 10. You'll be able to specify a global using statement similar to your underscore imports file for Razor, but for C sharp code. So you oh. won't have to have all of those using statements repeated all the time. Is it going to be as bad as having one giant master include file in C++? Because that never goes nicely. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we won't because it God, I remember is it okay to be like storytelling time and not actually getting of course. things done? Of okay. Course. On Warhammer Age of Reckoning, we had the like daddy of all include files on the server side. And it's like if you ever touched it, if anybody ever touched it to add a new header to it, like the whole game had to be recompiled. And you're talking like 30 minutes of time. Just be like, well, forget it. I guess I'm going to go to Starbucks, <laughs> you know. And we finally we, we hired someone and she was brilliant and stubborn. And I loved her. Just a fiery personality. And she went through and like was like, I'm breaking this up. It was one of those things where it's just like, this is just how it's always been. You know, yeah. and you get like this forlorn look on your face like, well, I stab myself in the eye occasionally, but I've always been told it's OK to do that. You know, and <laughs> that's kind of how it is with like legacy code. You're just you just get used to it. You know, I actually liken it more to having four cats in your house and then becoming accustomed to the smell. But, you know, that's personal because uh, I, I have four cats. Spoilers. Uh, list of animations, selector Zenos items. Reliving the glory days, uh, back when when DOS was that's Spanish for two, right? DOS. Do no, I'm I'm kidding. I know oh my DOS god! Is. I that was I serious. You were very good on that one. I was about <laughs> to just say, you know, I'm I'm good uh, now. I'm good. You guys have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I remember DOS three dot one. I think was the big big one that I used is it 3.1 it I started coding when I was 11 or 12 my dad got a computer and it was um, Windows like 3.1 mm -hmm. I want to say and I was doing uh, basic and then I jumped into visual basic once I hit like Windows 95 so and then, and so ever since I've been more into like the like the dot net WYSIWYG kind of editing. The irony now is that I don't even bother. I don't I don't WYSIWYG at XAML at all in my WPF applications. I I no. Um okay. So this is great and all, but if we run this right now, we're going to get um, an error because this doesn't exist in the hub. So I need to go back into the hub and create this. So so this is the only thing that I don't like about Signal R, is that oh. it has to use magic strings. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the same could be said about endpoints. If you think about it, you have to have like the correct string of of terms to get to the right endpoint, and then and then inherently know. Like I think it would be easier if maybe the the. I don't know if IntelliSense could be intelligent enough to detect, okay, this is the hub that they're trying to talk to, so maybe I should get a list of the the functions in there and provide them in a drop. That would be really cool, but yeah. Yeah, if, uh, if any of the, um, oh, what is that stuff called? Um, source code generator folks are watching. I think that might be a way to do ha. it. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Yeah, oh, I'm glad I stayed away from that part of of the crazy. I, I tried one of I those a couple weeks list. ago, and uh, it's it's a different beast. <laughs> yeah, I took a compiler course. I had the Red Dragon book, but. I never touched it after that. It's kind of like 3D math. Like a lot of people think that if you're in video games that that you know 3D math 
and and if that's not the case for everyone not not everyone has that like um you know me personally I immediately dove into user facing applications I make things like like the the level editors and animation editors and things like that for the designers that are working on the game um I write uh, core things on on the back end, like core th like the quest systems and stuff. I don't do I don't care how high your character can jump or the physics <laughs> behind it or if you can look at something and shoot it. Don't care. Like I've never had to do that stuff, so I don't have that background. Um, it's uh, it's it's definitely like one of those those things people think everybody in the game industry has but we we don't there we go sorry so see i already have a method here to just get the commands list um but that actually is used for something else that that's more of like just a uh the um the base tree that shows up on the dashboard so i don't have to worry about um I don't have to worry about passing too much information over uh, at once uh, when they open up the hub. Of course, I've changed everything now over to using um, the tree list view. It's gorgeous. I actually should probably, once we get this compiling, I need to show you what it looks like because that, that's I'd like the biggest that. change. Oh, God, because it used to be this horrible tree. And um, now I've got it in, like where you select it and it open up a component on the opposite side. Um, okay, so we're going to create a new list. Um, we're going to call it options and set it as default. And then we're going to for each over. Get all animations. And then options.add new. Display. Uh, actually, we'll do ID first. ID is equal to anim.id and display name is equal to anim.command. Aha, I did it. There we go. Commands dot what? Uh, I would do sort, but I don't think I can easily do sort. <laughs> uh, return JSON convert dot serialize object options and so basically that's just going to take this entire list because i one of the things i and this may be different with future releases of signal r i don't know um mm -hmm. but if the um if you want to return something as complex as a collection it doesn't work that's why i just say forget it i'm gonna just default serialize everything to a string and convert it on the opposite end. I don't think it has too many performance implications. Um, we, we do this type of stuff all the time with endpoints. I don't see why it would. Interesting. Oh, you mean you do this? Yeah. The, the dot string does result that behind yeah. the scenes. Does it for you. So whenever you call a, you know, a web API endpoint, dot nets just by default serializing it to json and then on the blazer side it's deserializing it that's funny yeah so yeah with the endpoints i can see that with with the hub and signal r you have more control over the data type that you want to fetch uh, or send over um so i just i just uh for for the complex types like the lists it just doesn't work uh returns a list i comment everything even if it's only me because i might look back at this in a couple of months and be like what did i do and what is this and why did i write it <laughs> i need to get better about that the only things i really comment are uh stuff that i've written for like a nuget package or something that's going to be a public used yeah like repository or or you know any kind of professional code but my streams i always forget to comment things and, i actually uh, am really good at commenting and it, it, but a lot of it is just sometimes i have to deal with so much code 
in so many different domains that I'll come back and look at it in a month. And I quite literally will not remember if I wrote something or did something unless I had left a comment. Um, there's a Kobayashi Maru question that we used to ask uh, in interviews where it's like, if you could remove one thing from your tool set, what would it be? And it was like, code reviews, um, uh, source so, uh, source control or comments and like there's no wrong answer but but it was funny to hear how people would noodle through what what they would get rid of and most people would choose comments because you could comment on check-ins and source control or go back and watch the history of the file so I thought was actually pretty interesting oh, but it that was always just a joke question to ask, kind of like how many manhole covers are in, are in Seattle. Um, <laughs> you know, everybody's got to ask that in reverse string, <laughs> which I can do on a bar napkin now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I did I went to a, a conference <sighs> once and they had the uh, like a competition, like three people sat down at a terminal and like you all had to do like what you said, like the reverse string thing and a couple other like little coding challenges to see who could get right. done first. And I sit down and I'm ready to type and I realize it's a Mac keyboard. And I, <gasps> I'm i like, I, I, you might as well have put like a different language in front of me, like a, like a, a Japanese keyboard or something. Like oh. I couldn't even just do the simplest thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I failed that so hard. Oh, man. <laughs> so for one of these, I'm actually going to pass the identifier. And then um, just just for my sanity, I'm going to go ahead. So you see how I have like public string animation and public good animation ID. I would like to because I have to I have to read this through um, and convert the data eventually i'm wondering if i should do it now just so we can test this but uh let's just make sure things are showing up like like you said earlier baby steps f5 <laughs> does anybody else do that is f5 you're like nope nope backing <laughs> up you're waiting Ooh, for it to explode amazon refunded me for the cowbell that's nice <laughs> oh good it remembered so, see, I have all these logs in here for the dashboard, but, oh, God, my, <laughs> it looks terrible. Actually, now I'm curious what this looks like. Oh, no, this looks good. See how I use the, the, the tree list here? So, you oh, can nice. do things like select and do, like, a mass move, enable, disable. So good. And I can select literally everything. I love this control. I use this all the time. Okay, so, back to the snapper. I will go to the command and we're going to go to the editor. And for folks in chat is about the last chance you have to do the prize drawing. Oh, so if, oh, nice. It's working. Look at that. It's working. Let's see. Now I know it's but like you have a lot of commands. Look at that. I do. I do. Um, I feel like I should show you guys how it works, but I can't. I should have used OBS cam for this. So you could, we could have brought it up and shown it, but um, I wonder with with this if there's a way. Yeah, there should be a filter. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you guys why I love these components, okay, and why why I use them religiously. So let's show, we know it works. It's working, working. Selection's not working. No, Amazon lost the package. They lost uh, it. I've had oh, that a lot lately. My my ten year old wanted to get a cowbell to play with me <laughs> after I showed her the Will Ferrell cowbell scene. <laughs> so I love that movie. <sighs> I love the bridge scene. That is my absolute favorite. Uh, oh, I was thinking of Anchorman. I'm sorry, you're you're Anchorman. Uh, yeah. Oh, Anchorman. either way. Yeah, either way. I, lo I, I love the bridge when he <laughs> he punt kicks the dog. <laughs> He's like, that's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that in years. I didn't see Anchorman 2. Needs more cowbell. Cowbell. I can't do. Okay. 
just saying it's filterable is true changes the whole perspective on this drop down list. <laughs> now, eventually, my goal with this, if for anybody who's tuned in a little late today, and you're like, why'd you make a component to house a component? Like it's the yo dog component of blazer components right now. It's because eventually I will have a template that that will show a preview of the item. So it'll be a little it'll have some more snazz to it. It'll, it'll be cooler and, and stuff and I'll do more things plus blah. So for now, yes, it's simple looking, but. So now if we run this again, you can see the filtering just came through. Okay. Well, when it when it runs. Okay, it's thinking about it. Oh my god, the size of this is killing me. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Oh my gosh. So I Why? I, I did responsive web design talks <gasps> like the early, early, early days of like what's a media query? And uh, every conference I went to, the the uh, projectors were like 720p. So it was so hard to show like media query <laughs> breakpoints when the projector you have is like tablet size. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I've noticed, if I if I do F, it's not just finding me all things with an F in it. So I have to remember. So it's doing starts with. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wonder if that's intentional. Um, I wonder if we have filter options on that. Yeah. Let's look. Let's look. <laughs> filter operator. Ah. So we have a filter operator. You can do um, contains, contains with, those, that sort oh. of thing. Oh crap. Okay, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe I need to find I need to look uh, down. I need to go to the code. The type is <laughs> uh string filter operator is is what it is. So it's the filter operator parameter and it needs to be set to a Telerik Blazor string filter operator. So you had it. You were on the right track. Oh okay, yeah. Contains. Is contained in or just contains? Yeah, it contains. I think it defaults to start with. So mm -hmm. that would be a little better because then people would be like, well, I know it starts with an F, which is kind of the story of my life. Okay. Let's try that again. Our engineers, I love them. They, they think of everything for us. <laughs> yeah, this has been really good. I think like with, the, with my bot, it's been fun. There are some things that we've hit like with work things that are just like a uh, little off, but a lot of that has to do with like, I'm not you know, an expert in blazer. Um, I am still learning, which is why I love to come in here and do these kinds of talks so that people can see someone somewhat new at it, noodling through it. So you can see like, it's not scripted. It's natural. I'm, I'm, I'm having to go to the documents. It's having to go to the documents and he works there. You know, it's, it, we all look up stuff. So, okay. So now if I do F, F Okay, good. So it's, it's so bringing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> See, and all I had to do was add those two parameters to the component, and it's doing the things that I want. So that's one less thing I have to write. <laughs> all right. So, and then I'll select it. Of course, right now it's not going to do anything. We're still kind of looking, okay, where's random snap? You know, and actually, I wonder random snap shows up in here. You see, I didn't even give it an exclamation point. And that the exclamation point, at least on Twitch, is kind of a way of of saying like like, oh, this is a command that I need to listen to. But you don't have to use that. Um, but that's just how I've named. That's my naming convention for things. If it doesn't have an exclamation point, then it's executed by the bot. So technically, this command can't be executed by a, a user in my chat channel. They can't type random snap and it'll play Thanos snapping. You know, it's it's uh, only okay. through this event. Um, so I have things kind of locked down. Now, what I don't know is if this would actually save the value because I'm not, it's it's not, it's, it's instanced the selection to the component. And so what I need to do is actually fire an event that it changed. Um, mm -hmm. Because eventually what I want to do is, well, if you select something in here, 
then I would want it to go, oh, I need to show like a, a the preview button or something um, or pop in another window or hover over, you know, all these different things to kind of, again, make the user workflow easier. I don't want people going, oh, I wonder what that was. I guess I should save and go back to the animations and preview it, you know, give them the tools that they need right in front of them to get the job done. Um, so, so this is a, a overall better experience, which even with the jankiness of me learning blazer through this whole ordeal is this is a million times better than the WPF version of GIFBot. WPF Very version cool. of GIFBot needed to be set on fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> so which do you find yourself more comfortable with? Uh, in terms of like WPF versus Blazor, the HTML or XAML? The HTML, honestly, because it has more of like, I hate the comparison, but like the Java swing layout where everything is just kind of like elastic. So I don't have to be very precise with, I just want the text box right here. You know, um, I, I feel like it's so much faster for me to add what I need, like the fields that I need. Like when somebody asked me, well, like when I added this in, uh, you know, for the animation the tied to the snap event, um, I all I had to do is add the data and add the text field. And I was like, boom, done. Whereas if I did it in WPF, it would have had to have like uh, like uh, the the extra data binding crap on the the view model and well you know, i mean seriously because like this is basically like here i give you the data and it just it's just doing the thing i don't know it feels like there's a, a couple steps less with blazer than with wpf um but that said we can't do everything that we want to do on the web unfortunately you know like I, I work i work in an environment where i have to have high powered 3d rendering applications I can't do that on a browser. And if anybody asked me to, I'd get up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. I'm more professional than that usually, but I'm actually excuse really yourself chill. before you got up and walked yes, out. Yes, excuse me. I need to go yell at a tree. Can you just just give me a minute? <laughs> yeah, every every time I see like WPF, and I'm not trying to beat up on XAML, but every time I see XAML, I feel like did they intentionally want you to use every special character on the keyboard was that the intent <laughs> just roll your face on the keyboard and make some beautiful xaml <laughs> it's like you've got colons and semicolons and braces and angles and like they're like what character don't we have are there tildes we need tildes what what else do we have in here <laughs> it's like let's not leave yes. anyone out <laughs> Um, and while you uh, write this up here, I'm going to post okay. our winner. So we uh -oh. did a big Is it giveaway me? for Blazing into Summer. We are giving away a Nintendo Switch, and that is going to Ian. And Todd gets our last $50 Amazon gift card. So we are going to email you uh, prize winners on how to redeem those prizes. So when you filled out your form, you put in your email. Hopefully you didn't put like fake at boohoo.net because we're not gonna be able to let you know how to get your prize. So uh, prize winners at the bottom of the screen on the ticker, thank you all so much for uh, watching all week long. It's been fantastic. And congrats. What yes, kind of congratulations. switch? Um, I don't remember uh eva is <gasps> probably watching she can let us know um it's one, one of the uh the popular switches yeah that's it that's the ticket <laughs> popular ones so the animal crossing one i don't know i don't know <laughs> that's okay I the, the one you. that plays the games <laughs> okay okay that works. <laughs> she said it is the animal crossing one Oh, I nailed it. I nailed it. Yep. On selected animation change. That sounds fantastic for an event. So, so we're detecting the change. Now we need to propagate that up to be like, hey, the animation changed. So I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a GUID in with it when I do that. 
So, so you're using an event callback, which is a special blazer delegate that will mm -hmm. invoke state has changed under the hood for you. Thank you. I did not know that. When I go back, I'm putting up the world's biggest code review. <laughs> <laughs> Invoke AC. I don't know if I can actually do that in here. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, in the early, early days of Blazor, which wasn't too long ago, uh, used, we used to not have event callback, and everything was in action with a state has changed attached to it. Uh, which got no, I, kind of I like this because it, it's like, okay, I've handled it on my end. I've made things look pretty. Like maybe I embed the the, the preview here, but what if the, the 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 other component, the page that's using this component, wants to do something else? So it needs to know that that changed. So for example, like this isn't mo this isn't responsible for my underlying data model. So I have to listen for this event so I can apply that change to my data model um, as that data. Change, change changes yeah okay well that was that was good 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 job georgia english <laughs> it's friday and i only had one coffee um okay so here we're gonna create a handler first oh my god where do i put this because i have so much stuff in here it is region get rid of that region ux methods there we go do, 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 do. Oh my god. It's just so hard. Can I shrink this to like 90%? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, private void handle animation selection changed. Uh, yeah. Um, pre. And we need one for our post as well. Yeah, as somebody who streams live coding all the time, like having the resolution this high makes you feel like your code is screaming back at you. <laughs> it's like all yes. caps almost. Copy paste never hurt anyone. Boop, said no programmer ever. <laughs> Now, why are you fussing? Cannot convert from method group to event callback. So this is one of those blazer errors that always could use more explanation, I think. So what it's saying, yeah, you're on the right track there. What it's saying is there's a type mismatch somewhere. So it's accepting a parameter and it's trying to pass that to a function that doesn't have a oh. matching whack-a-mole mm -hmm. so the on selected animation change delegate has a different parameter than the delegate that you're sending it to so it requires a GUID it's accepting yeah. a GUID yeah, so you yeah, gotta yeah. provide the GUID to it I do uh, if you go back, back a screen. Oh, back to the Razor yeah. file? In the, yep, in those parentheses. Uh, on the handle. Oh. Yeah, see, look at the method signature when you hover over it. It's saying that that, that takes the GUID of ID. So you need to pass the ID into that function somehow. That's weird. And basically, Blazor or the compiler can't infer where that comes from, so you need to provide it. Okay, so basically, I just want this to listen. So that's where it's a little odd. So it's just going to listen for that, for the event. So the event here is passing the GUID. So I don't think that's... That's weird. I thought that I would only need that because it would know to handle it. Now it's like, no, I had to stop and think about that. 
That's so weird. It should, but it's a type inference issue. Um, so on selected animation changed should return the GUID, right? Yes, it should return a GUID. It's like it's it's part of it's bubbling up with the event. If yeah, we were so to think from Windows terms, should match, but I don't know why they aren't. So in the parentheses that I, if you go back to the lambda that you had, yeah. Is the is it passing a parameter you could put in there and then pass it down the wire there? Like yeah. that? Does that make it happy? Okay, so, so there's something. So it's coming across this object there. Oh, Lord God. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I'll do the object. How's that? How's that? Are you happy now? Are you happy? Now it's happy. I don't like that. I feel like it's dirty, but fine. Okay. Well, I personally know that ID is a good, so whatever. All right. So we'll do um, m temp command dot animation ID. Actually, hold on. Pre. Oh, oh, wow. I really dropped the ball on that. Sometimes, do you ever go back through and you're like, why did I name things that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one on my Blazing, Blaze, Blazeport application. That's like a, it's like a rideshare, space rideshare thing. And I've got places where I've named things like departure location and arrival location. And there's like, departure port arrival port and then like those things are just mishmashed all together and I, I never take go sort them all out yet <laughs> um, this whole casting thing I'm wondering if uh, the component that that we had the squiggles on if we can set T item there is that what what is oh, that that's even is that your oh. custom component that we're doing this with uh, yes I also yeah, found the bug. odd that it doesn't have. Yeah, if you set T item, see if you can set T item to GUID. Does it have a T item, or is it's not a generic component, so it might not even have. No, one. no, I don't know if that'll work. Um, yeah, this is really bizarre. I want to say I ran into this at work earlier this week, but then again, I've worked on like three different domains this week, so I can't remember what I did. Yeah, this you always happens could... on event delegates where the parameters aren't matching but yeah the the error doesn't tell you that the error just gives you that can't convert from x to y thing yeah it's very it really should just handle it <clears throat> like it, you should just be able to say handle pre-animation selection change and just set it and the function signature should match up i wonder if maybe because i haven't compiled yet that intellisense doesn't know so I'd like to try real quick just taking this out like that mm -hmm. and then making that GUID. That's super superfluous, but just bear with me. Let's just see if it does it. See it compiled. So hmm. so IntelliSense didn't. So IntelliSense <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Welcome to my life. I also do that at work <laughs> while, while I'm coding. I was like, ah! You just have to bark at it. See? See? It's, Intelligence so it's a false, is false negative. Full of, full of crap. Yeah, that was confusing. And I've just wasted five minutes of my life on that. I want my five minutes back. Yeah. Oh, Microsoft gods. Wow. But if they're yeah, listening, the I still love you. This is one of those those moments where, like, <laughs> you know, you have these frustrations, but in the grand scheme of things, this is less frustrating to me than all of the frustrations that I've had with something like, uh, like a modern JavaScript framework. I won't name one because I don't want to be the bad guy, but <laughs> there's just so many things I'll, with, I'll like, do it. Webpack <laughs> and all of those things that I could, I had just spent hours hunting down errors, and... The razor tooling, yeah, it's not 
always, I mean, it tries really hard to do the right thing, but it doesn't always get us to where we need to be. While it's mildly frustrating, it's not nearly as frustrating as all the JavaScript yeah. stuff I've dealt with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a joke there's a joke running joke in my channel about that we, the meme is i hate javascript um and and it, it, it's kind of off-putting when people come into my twitch channel and i'm doing code like once in a blue moon and i cut the javascript jokes um because it sounds like gatekeeping but really it's just it's just a joke i have something bad to say about every language every, yeah, every single one even even though i work primarily in in net territory these days like i still have bad things to say about it um i could go on forever about javascript though <laughs> uh okay so i set a breakpoint just to make sure we are handling the event correctly and getting the right data and you can see the guid is coming through so we are being propagated the correct value and what i'm going to do is is I, since I'm, I'm handling it here i don't have the post animation id so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna set that. And this is this is another thing I love about Blazor is I can actually debug this code. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas in like the earlier stages of Blaze of Blazor, we really couldn't do this. Um, so I'm actually I really enjoy uh, that that I'm able to do this without doing a bunch of console out, um, which I feel like is taking web to like a next level for debugging. Um, so that's working. So what we're going to do now, we're going to let that run and we're going to save those changes. So that's going to, that's going to shoot the data down. Um, so here's the command. That's the snapper command. And we can see that we have a post animation ID right here. So that, that should persist. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, let's go back to the dashboard, back to the snapper data, just to make sure everything is good and clean and not cached. And we're going to open it up again and it has it selected. Ta -da! Very nice. Just like that. Very nice. We actually got it done. You, you <laughs> got it done. You got yeah. it done. Yeah, excellent job. The, the only thing I didn't get done uh would be like the data conversion to make sure that the snapper data when next time somebody opens up gifbot with a new version that it goes oh let's take this deprecated data and convert it to the appropriate format now so i can start getting rid of old fields um you know i that's the only thing i hate um uh, you know about doing the JSON format as I feel like if I make these kinds of architectural changes down the line, then I end up with a bunch of, uh, you know, extra fields in the data for no reason. So there but. was a quick question I wanted to uh, grab from chat here in YouTube. Okay. So somebody was asking, like, when you use the at symbol, they've seen it before, like preceding the on click, and then they've seen it in the function, you know, preceding the function name, what's the difference between those two things? So if you have an at symbol and it's at on click, that is a, that's what you're binding to a native DOM element on click event. If it is after the on click, that is a razor component and you're in the blazer universe already and you're just binding in a method to a .NET on click event. So I know those look confusing when you see them side by side, but if you have like a div or like a uh, button HTML element, you would use the at on click. And if it was a Blazor component, you'd use just regular on click uh, with the function name. Great question. Very good. I actually didn't know the correct answer for that. That would be my guess. But then I'd just be like, <laughs> let's yeah, <any> Google it. <laughs> native HTML element, you have to use the at symbol to let Blazor know. Because if you just say on click to like a, an HTML button, Blazor yeah. doesn't have any way to know that you want to bind the JavaScript on click event or the C sharp on click event. And if you exclude the at symbol from that, it assumes JavaScript. And if you have the at symbol, it's like, oh, that's a blazer thing. Yep. Cool. So I know you had a hard out. Um, are are you, you good with time or, or do you, are you ready to, to wrap up? 
is totally uh, up to you. I, I need to wrap up, if that's okay. <laughs> that is perfectly fine. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, this is really cool. I, I can't wait to see what you do with Giftbot next. Um, thanks for coming on and sharing, you know, a, a portion of your your Giftbot uh, app with us and showing us how the features work internally. This is very cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, where can we find you on the interwebs? Oh, oh gosh. Well, uh, it's fierce kittens. Uh, on everything so twitter twitch youtube youtube sewing though so don't be discouraged <laughs> um and uh instagram yeah all fierce kittens all the way yeah and you do so many things not just coding so there is I just do. so much entertainment there uh <laughs> you're a fantastic personality on on Thank those you. things and so much fun to watch Thank you for coming on and, and sharing yourself and your, your project with us. Thank you. And that wraps up Blazing into Summer, everybody. Uh, it's been a fantastic five days. It's all going up on our YouTube channel. So make sure you uh, go check that out. And uh, once again, just thank you everyone for making this possible and have a great weekend. <laughs>